Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a complex problem, a problem that was suggested by one of my viewers. And I forgot to include it in the video so I apologize, but I will include a picture of the suggestion as well as the name of the user in the description or as a comment, or both, who knows. Anyways, we have this equation, z to the z equals i to the i, and to solve this problem, we're going to invoke the Lambert's w function, right? You probably knew that, because anytime you have z to the z, that's what happens, right? Cool. Now, to be able to solve this problem, obviously, we're going to be doing some natural logs, and you probably have an obvious solution at this point, right? Think about it. I mean, what can Z be so that this is satisfied? But that's only part of the picture. Anyways, let's go ahead and do this. I want to natural log both sides or write both of these as complex exponentials. By definition, this can be written as e to the power z ln z, and this can be written as e to the power i ln i. i for an i, right? It's kind of like z is equal to i would work, right? Probably. How about negative i? Would that work? That's a good question. Anyways, let's go ahead and see where we can go from here. We can actually get rid of the e's and write this as z ln z equals i ln i. Again, by comparing both sides, we kind of arrive at z equals i, but complex numbers are very complex, so we have to be very careful with them, right? Okay, we're probably missing something. But another thing that we need to worry about besides this is that we can multiply right hand side and for the same reason left hand side but I want to do the right hand side because that's a constant did you know that e by e to the power 2 pi n i why because this is 1 in the complex world so I can always multiply anything by 1 without changing the value but it's actually going to change solutions that's why complex numbers uh, or solutions are going to be multi-valued make sense okay cool now that gives us a different equation, z ln z equals i ln i plus 2 pi n i. And of course, this is going to give you a multiple of i, but don't be fooled by that because ln i is a complex number. What is ln i? ln i is ln absolute value of i plus i times the argument of i. It's kind of like too many i's, right? <laughs> okay. Absolute value of i is 1, so this is 0 because that's real. An argument of i is pi over 2, so ln i should be something like i pi over 2. But again, because of the multi-valued nature of the argument, pi over 2 can be written as pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. Or I guess you could use 2 pi k, right? Because we already used n. So you can kind of make the argument more general. Make sense? So that's ln i. In other words, which is kind of weird, right? ln i is a multiple of i. It could be positive or negative, by the way. Be, be careful, okay? And it's, I'm not saying it's an integer multiple, but it's more like an irrational multiple because pi over 3 is irrational, right? Very irrational. And very transcendent, um, transcendental, something like that. Anyway, that's ln i, and I can go ahead and plug it in here. So we get z ln z equals i times ln i, which is going to be i times i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi k and then there's another plus 2 pi n i, right? Oh, by the way, I forgot to say, k and n are integers. You probably guessed that, right? But I forgot to say it. Now, i times i is i squared, so that is negative 1, right? So that's just, just going to bring a negative sign. z ln z is going to be negative pi over 2 minus 2 pi k. Notice that i is gone, plus 2 pi n i. So the multiples of 2 pi are being used differently here because we have an imaginary part. You see that? But subtracting 2 pi k, multiples of 2 pi, is the same thing as adding. So I could probably turn this into negative pi over 2 plus 2 pi m plus 2 pi n i. Okay, great. Million dollar question. How do you solve for z? Let's go ahead and take a look at the complicated case, which is this one. And then we'll look at simpler cases, easier cases, okay? First of all, write the z as e to the power ln z. That's what we can do, right? With real or complex values. 
and then this is equal to negative pi over 2 plus 2 pi m plus 2 pi n i. Awesome. M and n are integers. They can be pretty much any integer, right? They don't have to be the same, by the way. Now, we can use Lambert's W on both sides, can't we? Put a little W here or a big one, whatever you like, and a W here. Lambert's W function is basically quickly, let me tell you what it is. It acts upon T e to the T and turns it into T. Turns coffee into T. Let's call this coffee. How about that? All right, you like that? Okay. So we have a machine that turns T e to the T to T, which is called Lambert's W function. In other words, it's the inverse for T e to the T. Nice, because we don't really have an explicit way of expressing it, except for just calling it Lambert's W. All right, or product log. But that's how Wolfram Alpha interprets it, right? Product log, and be careful because no spaces. If you write product log of something like, let's say, I, it's going to give you the product log. And if you specify a number like 0, 1, 2, it's going to give you different branches. I think you write it like product log, and then in parentheses you kind of like put like 0, comma i or something like that. I think this indicates the branch, if I'm not mistaken. Correct me if I'm wrong. Anyways. Here, application gives us L and Z because that's my T, right? Notice that. That's my T here. And of course, that's pretty simple. And on the right hand side, I get W of something not that simple. Super complicated, right? Okay, great. So, multi value thing. Let me cre clear this area. C clear this area. Can't even say clear. Now, we're going to go ahead and do this. I mean, we're not going to be able to do anything because we're stuck, right? This is Lambert's W something. But if you replace M and N with certain values and plug it into product log, you're going to get some answers. If you plug this in directly to from alpha, you're probably going to get something complicated, which I'll probably show you at the end. I hope I did not forget to include it this time. Anyways, Z from here is just going to be E to the power W of negative pi over 2 plus 2 pi M plus 2 pi and I. Do you like that? <laughs> Pretty complicated, but it's, hey, it's a complex word, right? So that's what it is. So in general, that should be the solution, right? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at a specific case, a very specific case. M equals zero, N equals zero. The awesomest case, right? In that case, Z is going to equal E to the power Lambert's W of negative pi over two. Okay, hopefully we can evaluate this, right? Can we? Well, here's the thing. First of all, I want to evaluate the exponent. What is Lambert W of negative pi over two? Because if I can find it, I can just plug it in, right? Easy. Okay, I don't want to write the E every time. That's too much work. I'm lazy. What can you do, right? So, to be able to do this, I need to put it in the form T to the T. And guess what? I can do it. First of all, write this as negative 1 times pi over 2, and then write the negative 1 as i squared. Isn't that amazing? Like every time we see i squared, we see i squared, we replace with negative 1. And sometimes when we see negative 1, we must replace with i squared because it's fun. Actually, it, it'll do the work. That's why. So now notice that I can separate these guys as i times i pi over 2. This is where the magic comes in. Okay. This is ln i. Awesome, right? Because remember, we just found it. It was LNI, at least one of the values of LNI. Come on, Bear, work with me, okay? And I can write this as LNI times e to the power LNI. And just that's just amazing. You know why? Because it's math. Math is always amazing. It's love. Anyways, when you apply Lambert to this, you get LNI. What did we have on the left-hand side? We didn't have anything. This is Lambert's W. So this is LNI. Isn't that beautiful? So I'm going to replace that with e LNI and I get Z equals E to the power LNI, which is I. Finally, one of the solutions is I. But we, didn't you know that? Yes, but we still wanted to be sure about that. By the way, let me tell you, I know some people are going to be like, oh, this is too easy because I to the pi, I to the I is real. Yes, it is. Because I to the I is E to the I pi over 2, at least one of the values. Come on, the principal value. And this becomes e to the power negative pi over 2. And this is approximately 0 0.2079. Guess what happens if you plug this in to Wolfram Alpha or make a graph? You don't get any intersection points. Because 
there are no real solutions as far as I know. I could be wrong though. But this is just on the principal value. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. And bye-bye.